Welcome to Should I Read It? Should I Read It is a weekly podcast that takes a deep dive into books. I'll provide a summary of the book and tell you how the ideas in the book relate across all the books we've covered so far. The goal of all your marketing is to stand up from the crowd, to build a site or product that people really notice and that they're willing to trade money or attention for. This is not an easy road, though. It takes a lot of work and some luck to stand out from the myriad of competitors in any endeavor that you want to do. Now, this is where Stand Out by Dory Clark is going to help you. Clark starts by telling us that experts really aren't better than us, that they just found a message that resonates with their readers. Stand Out is intended to help us find that message for ourselves and then package it so that it resonates with our market. One thing that Dory Clark is not trying to do is to help us become a mere celebrity, someone that has no real useful content that's just popular because they're popular. She wants us to be someone that has solid intellectual content in the market that helps people have impact. And here's how she says that. Thought leaders strive to have an impact, and that requires them to get outside the ivory tower and ensure that their message is accessible and actionable. Actionable is a key word there, people. In her mind, it all comes down to value creation, like this. Whether you work inside a corporation or as an entrepreneur, today's challenge is the same. How do you add so much value to others that they fight to have you on their team? Standout is broken into three sections. First, Clark helps us figure out how to break out our idea so that we have something for ourselves. Second, she teaches us how we can start to build a following. And finally, she walks readers through the logistics of making thought leadership happen. Let's start with part one. On the journey to finding your big idea, Clark says that a good thought leader is someone who asks questions that others have not asked. Good thought leaders are people that are okay with challenging the status quo in their industry, and they don't mind some of the negative consequences that will come with that because people don't like when you question what's going on. Here's how she says it. No industry ever welcomes those who challenge its received wisdom, but if you're willing to risk short-term disappropriation, you can ultimately make a substantial contribution to your field. Clark provides us with a bunch of great questions to help us hone in on that big idea that we might become known for. She recommends that you find a slice of a niche and then dominate it. Once you've achieved domination, you can expand into the other areas that you're interested in, but don't spread yourself too wide to start. Remember that the more you do in a single industry or slice, the more you can stand out, which means you're going to grow your recognition faster as a thought leader. There are a few ways that Clark says you can structure your content. One way is to provide new research into your niche. This may be talking to, they say, the non-typical person in your field, instead of focusing on the people that everyone always talks to. A second way is to combine all the ideas that are in your background into something new. Maybe you have extensive healthcare experience and can bring that knowledge to bear on a new industry that is ripe for the same processes. I could take my athleticism, my training, everything like that, and turn it into a system where you build base miles and that's the base part of your relationship and, you know, sprinting is your dates, stuff like that. Once you have your ideas ready to go, it's time to start creating a framework that you can be known for. Think of the five love languages or getting things done. Both of these are frameworks and they launch their creators into expert status in their fields. Now, with all the content you produce, make sure it does double or triple duty. I do that with these book reviews, as they become a written piece, a podcast, and then they end up on YouTube, sometimes in full video form, sometimes just audio. If you look at getting things done on Amazon, you'll see that the GTD content has been adapted for teens, there's a workbook, there's an audiobook, there's coaching. Don't silo your content. Now, part two, how to build a following. Now that your ideas are ready to go, it's time to start building a following according to Clark. This starts by looking around at your colleagues and the existing network you have. You're not looking at them to see how they can help you though. You're gonna see how you can bring value to them with the content you have. This is a fairly safe place to start and get feedback because at least in theory, these people like you. They're gonna sit and at least provide some feedback. If you're heading to a networking event, don't aim to be the business card machine gun. Go for depth instead. Here's a quote from Clark. Do you have enough people in your professional life who really know you? The bias in most discussions about networking is toward meeting more people, going to more cocktail parties, and trading more business cards. But sometimes, depth can be as important, if not more so, than breadth. Here you can use something my friend Philip introduced me to. There'll be a link to Philip's site in the show notes. And he called it Trust Velocity. Trust velocity is the idea that the closer you get to shaking hands, the more they trust you. Look at these high-value face-to-face interactions as often as possible as you try to build your name as a leader in the field. 
even this podcasting, you can hear my voice, you can hear my tone, you can hear my inflection, you can hear all that stuff. If I'm on video, you can see that I'm flapping my arms around like a crazy person. The closer you can get to shaking someone's hand, the more trust you're building. At some point, you are going to have to move beyond people you can have direct contact with, though. You will need to have some content that reaches out online so that many people can find and interact with your ideas. Blogging is one of the easiest ways to do this because the barrier to entry is so low. Here's a quote from the book. Your ideas can't gain traction if no one knows about them. Blogging is a way to reach others and get them on board. For online networking, Clark says that you need to pick a network or two and then dive deep. Learn how to leverage it well and focus your attention on that network. Don't scatter yourself around everywhere. Focus on one that you enjoy and works for your niche. As you build your community, always focus on the value you can provide. Make sure you are connecting people, especially when there is no direct benefit to you. If you continue to focus on how to help others get what they want, you're going to get what you want. Part three, how are we going to make this thought leadership happen? And yes, I think thought leadership feels like a silly word. We're going to get to that. Stand up finishes with a focus on how to that ties it all together so you can become a thought leader. It starts by reminding us that we need a space without distraction to have a good idea that's worth building in the first place. If you're wondering how to get that space, check out my mullet method or read Digital Minimalism. Links to both of those in the show notes. Clark also reminds us that we can't always be giving away our content for free. When she says it like this, Unfortunately for many aspiring thought leaders seeking to make a living from their work, it would be easy to devote all their time to writing free online articles, helping others tremendously, and building a powerful reputation, all while starving. I rarely write for free anymore. I started the transition to paid writing mainly by asking about the budget whenever someone asked me to write for them. It felt like a bold move when I first did it, but every single person has come back with some sort of budget. Clark reminds us of a few things as she ends the book. First, your income will be a mix of a bunch of things. I earn my income by doing a bit of freelance writing still, doing a bit of coding, coaching my books, and Patreon. Don't get stuck on one method as the only method you'll ever have to make money. Second, it's going to take a bunch of work to get where you want to be as a leader in your field. Do not assume that you can just show up one day and be a leader. I've been writing for 10 years to get some of the opportunities I have now. It's going to take you a bunch of effort, but if you stay the course, it can be really worth it. Now, a word on the words thought leaders, because it sounds kind of lame, really. And here's what Clark says about the word thought leader. Some who impugn the concept of thought leadership seem to think it's all about self-aggrandizement. That may be true for some, but real thought leaders have an idea they want to share with the world, one that they know is important enough to fight for. Like I said, the idea of thought leadership sounds pretty lame to me, but mostly because so many people call themselves this thing, and they have little substance to their work at all. It's all bluster, but they got a 4 dollars course that they want to sell you, and they're just going to keep emailing you and bugging you until you buy it, with a whole bunch of crazy, dumb marketing tactics. If you're going to be a thought leader, don't be one like this. This episode of Should I Read It is brought to you by my latest book, The Art of Focus. If you're tired of running around trying different ideas and getting no traction, if you are tired of having ideas, but you never actually get to work on them, if you're just tired, then The Art of Focus is for you. It's going to give you the exact systems I've used to build my ideal life, set up my times that I can really work and get lots done in the six hours a day that I work most days, and test my ideas in the marketplace so that I know they succeed. You can purchase it on Amazon at curtismichael.ca slash recommends slash A-O-F. Final question, should you read Stand Out by Dory Clark? Overall, Stand Out had a bunch of great advice for learning to further your ideas in the marketplace. It didn't feel like a text that everyone has to read, but if you're looking to get a start in marketing yourself as a leader, it's not a bad place to start. You are going to need to supplement your knowledge after with books like these three, The 10X Marketing Formula, The Dip, and Make a Killing with Content. Yep, links to all those in the notes. If I was going to suggest a reading order, it would actually be first is the 10x marketing formula, second is the dip, third is stand out, and fourth is make a killing with content. Thanks for listening to Should I Read It? To support the show, you can leave me a review in iTunes or a heart or a star in whatever podcast player you use. These help more people find the show. 
If you want to get more reading done, you should get an Audible membership. If you use curtismichaelca slash recommends slash audible, that will help the production of the show financially.